Alright, so um, I guess I can take my mask off now because it's my place. Um, I just got my keys, so I'm going to show you. Uh, I don't think I can turn around though. Wait. I just got the keys, so I wanted to give y'all a grand tour to the new Carmico HQ. I am so excited. So this table actually comes with the place, which is nice. Um, so there's this little kitchenette here with a free for- Ooh, we got <laughs> ice cube makers. Okay, I didn't know that. Uh, and a nice little fridge. Then this is the main room. Those stairs go up to my, um, my little side door. I guess I can just show you because it's mine now. My little side door where I'll load things in. Um, I don't know what this is, but I'm about to find out. Oh, that's just some stuff. Um, we got the nice, like, painted brick walls. And then this is office number one. Um, probably gonna take that sound foam off, but got the exposed brick. This one will probably be my office with these nice rustic doors that we're gonna be painting black. More walls. And then this is office number two. This one is a little bit longer than the other one, still exposed brick wall. I'm gonna shut that off. That's the front door there. And then this is the, what I've coined the dungeon. Um, for obvious reasons, looking at this door, it is most definitely a dungeon. I cut the video off because I got a call, but you go into the dungeon and this is the back storage room. So this is where I'll be keeping all my stock. I'm so excited. All right, so this is most certainly a scrapped video that I wanted to do as an office makeover. I have this little office space in our townhouse that is essentially a like half hallway to a storage room that I just decided to put my desk in because I wanted my own personal space in the basement. Aiden and I used to have our desk like kind of back to back, but because we work together and we live together and we commute together, we need just a little bit of separation. So he has his space and I have mine. Um, but since we've started to do a little bit more work from home, I wanted to see if I could improve the space. So I brought all my good equipment home since I'm the most creative at home and our studio has turned into more of a warehouse than a creative studio. And I can be the most creative at home rather than somewhere that is more of a functional, you know, shipping space um which the studio has kind of now turned into so this is just me kind of setting stuff up and testing my space and making sure that all the heights work out and um as someone who is quite short i'm 5'1 you can see under my desk there i have a stool because my desk is too high for my feet to touch the ground it's a whole thing but yeah i'm just kind of testing to see if my setup is working out and clearly it really isn't because i need to bring the monitor prop back in and also having some extra storage is always a good thing so yeah hello friends and welcome to my suburban home and more importantly my suburban home office um we are doing a little bit more work from home than usual through the holiday season uh and winter season in general just because you know seasonal depression isn't great and having a change of pace and being able to work from home and work at your own pace is really exciting and a privilege that we get for owning our own business. So, um, as you probably have seen clips of interspersed, I have set up my home office with all of the good equipment from the office because we are very fortunate, fortunate to have a uh, studio to work out of, but you know, I do most of my drawing from home and most of my designing from home, so having the good equipment here makes the most sense. Uh, and also the monitor is 99% uh, Adobe True Color certified and I need that to be able to pick colors to make real things come to life. So here it is. Um, and so this video is basically about me trying to make my work from home situation a little bit more cozy because on this side, as you can see, there's a grody concrete wall. And on this side, that you can't see, is an even more grody pink insulation wall. And I like to make it a little bit more homey 
and do what I can to make it a nice space so that I can make more content and more videos if you want me to, if you like this. I might just do it anyways. Who knows? More content, the better. Welcome to the world now. So come along with me on this journey to make my work from home situation more cozy. Hey, come, 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 come. And this is what you were propped up against to get the shot of my desk. And this is just a little bit of a tour of the space. It's quite small, but it gets the job done. I have my Cintiq and my monitor and my little paint supplies, my guitars, which I don't play as often as I should. And yeah, I mean, this is my Pride and Joy keyboard as I'm clearly featuring it quite a bit here. Um, but yeah, this is just my little office space where all the magic happens. This was going to be a little planning session where I showed off my Mugo Bunny supplies, who is an amazing artist here in Toronto-ish area. Um, but you know, obviously this didn't quite work out. I didn't end up doing anything with it because I figured I would just save that money for our move in June. Uh, but you guys gave me a bunch of really nice suggestions on how to impermanently dress this space up. I don't know why I paused so long there. Um, but it's just, I, I felt like I didn't want to put in effort to buy a bunch of things and put them up when I would just take them down again in a few months. So you can watch me make my notes way too pretty for what they ended up amounting to. But I found that writing physical notes and especially making them look nice is a really valuable way that I found to make my work and my needs and my goals really tangible because now I've written them in a physical way rather than, than them like floating around with the bees in my head <laughs> which I always call my like ADHD tendencies the bees because I just feel like I'm kind of buzzing around and eventually they bump into something productive um, and here I tried to be a little creative and use a kind of to scale model of the space where I actually measured the floor out and use the squares to kind of represent the space and I wanted to see how I could position stuff to maximize the space and I was shocked at how much I could actually do in this space with how little there was. Um, I never ended up actually doing anything with it but it definitely taught me a valuable lesson on even though your space might be small it was still good enough to do whatever you need to do. You just gotta be a little bit creative with it. Um, and yeah, hopefully when we move in June, I'll be able to have the nice personal space that I've always dreamt of, perhaps in time for my birthday on June 9th. That would be a really nice gift, huh? Hello friends and welcome to my suburban home with my Christmas decor still up which you're probably not gonna be watching this anytime before christmas uh because i'm filming this literally two days before christmas and i probably won't be editing jack shit for quite a while but um i am working on a little gift for my best friend allison if you don't know who she is she's ocean in space she makes the best big anime shirts and she is my best friend of like 11 years so um i got her a palette from Sugar House Ceramic Co. And I wanted to make her a little padded case for it because I am very clumsy and I'm sure she is as well and it would break my heart if it broke. So she is a big strawberry fiend. And so I'm using this strawberry fabric and I'm gonna have the lining be this cute small red gingham because I'm a gingham fiend. And I also got myself one because I'm a sucker and I really wanted one for myself. So I'm doing mine in this cute little like tan gingham. It looks so much better when the sun's not blaring at me, but I'm not a professional seamstress, but I'm gonna do it anyways. Let's go. Hello friends and welcome to the voiceover portion of my silly little project. I am here making a pattern, big air quotes, pattern for my little pouches. I am in no way a professional seamstress. I've never taken a single class in my life. 
Um, I'm just trying to follow some advice I give to people pretty often, which is that you're never going to feel like you're good enough to do whatever you want to do, and you're going to always make excuses, be like, oh, well, I just need to be a little bit better, or my space needs to be a little bit nicer, because when you get your skills up to what used to be that level that you wanted to start at, it's now your standards are going to be higher and it's not going to be good enough still. So you might as well just start doing it because you're never going to start if you don't, which is why I decided to do an eight hour sewing project all in one day. The inspiration for starting this little project was honestly I had to make a gift for one of my friends because I was trying to do something else that kept not working out and I got to rediscover a skill that I used to have when I was in game school and in high school I, I picked up animating again which I haven't done in years and it was really cool to remember that I have skills that I just don't use and that th I'm not as rusty as I thought I was which kind of sprouted into doing this sewing project. I luckily, because I bought myself one of the paint palettes as well, I realized a big fatal flaw that was, how am I supposed to store this without being worried that I'm gonna break it in half because I break things all the time. And so I, instead of just humming and hawing about it and leaving it, I picked myself up. And by pick myself up, I mean asked Aiden to drive me to the fabric store because I can't drive and got all the materials that I needed and I wanted to make a padded case so that, you know, while if it got yeeted down a flight of stairs it wouldn't really be great, um, I would still be able to keep it safe and yeah. You can really see my clear efforts to attempt at making this video as aesthetic as possible by using some dried flowers in a vase as a as a paperweight, I guess. But quick, quickly, I move it to the side because it's just not practical. Um, yeah, I was talking a little bit earlier about my hesitation to start doing YouTube. Um, I've actually always I've always wanted to, and I actually did make some YouTube videos when I was in high school. Um, I made some League of Legends music parodies, um, <laughs> and they are not on the internet anymore. They will never see the light of day, and honestly, I kind of wish I could find them, but I fully deleted them because I got super bullied for it. Um, but sometimes I wonder what would have happened if I didn't listen to people who made fun of me for it and just kept doing what I love, because the thing that's brought me the most happiness and community and fulfillment in my life so far is just doing exactly what it is that I want to do with, you know, with Karmiko or even personally with my personal style. It's just doing whatever the heck I want. And so I kind of wish I could have had the strength to just continue doing it despite having gotten made fun of for it. But I can't go back on that now. And so here we are. And you're about to see the most depressing part of this entire endeavor. I watched an embarrassing amount of bobbin threading videos to get it right and every time- I've used this machine so many times and every single time I need to look up how to thread the bobbin, um, but clearly I never learn.
they ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because they would never understand. So crisis averted and memes aside, we're on to sewing. And guys, I love sewing. It's so satisfying to just like fold things in a nice straight line and then sew them down and they just look so nice and crisp. Being able to create things with your hands is so cool. And I mean, I do that for, for a job, but I don't like craft everything myself because thankfully things are a little bit too crazy for me to be able to do it on my own um we're even at the point with fulfillment and like shipping stuff that it's a bit out of our hands which is really really cool and something i'm so grateful for uh but being able to get my fingers into fabric and create something from scratch is really magical and i i miss doing stuff like that with I, I took a pottery- I mean, I didn't take a pottery class, I had a friend in college teach me how to throw on the wheel, which I did one single session with her, and I'm hooked. I need to find some kind of way to get my fingers in some clay sometime soon, and that rhymed, and I didn't mean it to. Um, but yeah, I am really excited to be, like, literally sitting here making this voice recording, I'm very excited because I feel like I'm finally doing something that I've always wanted to be doing. So here I'm just adding the lining for the, uh, the pouches and making sure that they're nice and padded and I keep measuring it to make sure that I don't accidentally make it way too small. Like the first one is like a tiny bit too small, which is for Allison, but I'm sure she won't mind. Um, and yeah, I fully did not record. <laughs> sewing hers together because I just got so in the zone that I forgot but this took eight hours so I hope y'all will understand but yeah and I'm just checking it one more time to make sure everything fits and sewing up the edges here and then I guess I think I'll be turning it inside out I'm not sure if it will be in this video here but yeah oh there I go and here is the final product for both of them I decided to go with snap closures instead of the zippers I had bought just because I didn't want to mess it up by trying to install the zipper that may not work or it could break later because you can always replace the snaps really easily but replacing the zipper could be a bit more of a pain in the ass and so I didn't do that. Um, and I gave myself the slightly more wonky palette but I really can't complain because these are all handmade and hand carved and they're super beautiful and I'm already thinking of the next one I'm going to buy. And this one is Allison's. And you can see I did the inside as the gingham and the outside as the strawberry. You can see I struggle a little bit to get it out, but it still fits nicely. Uh, next time I would probably use a red thread instead. And ooh, they came with this sponge that fits perfectly in every slot. I love when a company and a brand thinks of, you know, all the little things that you could possibly need and sizing things properly and just being mindful of all the things that you could possibly need with a product and that makes me very happy to see.